friends, welcome to another episode of the new video podcast series of RCS Cyprus titled Meet the Royal Commonwealth Society and the Commonwealth. In this episode, we will introduce the Queen's Commonwealth Essay Competition with Royal Commonwealth Society. Particularly, we will discuss about the procedures of this competition, this year's topic, the benefits for the participants, and other related aspects. In order to discuss about the Queen's Commonwealth Essay Competition, Today, we're hosting two very good colleagues, Dr. Emilio Solomon from RCS Cyprus and Coral Fleming from RCS London. Allow me to introduce our discussions. Dr. Emilio Solomon is a director of UNESCO Chair of the University of Nicosia and member, of course, of the RCS Cyprus Board. He studied history at the University of Cardiff and his postgraduate studies are in the field of history and history. He received his doctorate at the University of Middle Essex and since, since 2000, he has been teaching at the University of Nicosia. Dr. Mo is the president of, of the Cyprus Society of Historical Studies, member of the Historical Association of the United States, a fellow of the Historical Association of Great Britain, a member of the National Council for History Education, and member of many other professional associations and organizations in Cyprus, in UK, and at the United States. He is also the managing editor of the Cyprus Review Journal. Dr. Emilio Solomon has published many articles and also edited several books. His interests focus on the areas of history didactics, historiography, as well as the history of history. Coral Fleming is a senior program officer at the RCS in London. Coral works as part of the youth and education team to deliver education programs across the world, including the Queen's College Essay Competition. With several years of experience of youth programs, both in the UK and overseas, she's passionate about empowering young people to participate in global discussion and their own communities. Dear both, dear, uh, dear uh, Mr. Mu, dear Cora, let me thank you for accepting my invitation and welcome you to the RCS Cyprus video podcast series. Thank you, Marinos. Thank you for the invitation. It will be a pleasure to have this discussion and hopefully uh, the podcast will be viewed by many young people uh, who would be interested in the essay competition. Thank you. Definitely. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm sure that we're going to have a, a great discussion and, you know, uh, many, many, uh, many potential participants um, will, will understand the value uh, of this prestigious uh, competition. Uh, so let, let's begin the discussion. Uh, literacy is one of the main focus areas of the Royal Commonwealth Society. So my first question is to, um, to Coral. How this competition, Coral, Coral, is linked with this approach of RCS? And please introduce us to the Queen's Com Commonwealth Essay Competition. For example, like, explain what is this competition, a brief, a brief history of the competition, and some basic information. Yeah, absolutely. So the Royal Commonwealth Society has recently created our new strategic plan, which serves as a focus of what we'd like to work on in the next few years. Um, literacy is a really important part of that. We've run the competition since 1883 when it first began. And since then, it has been able to reach out to thousands of young people across the Commonwealth and um, provided them the opportunity to learn a little bit about the network, a little bit about the, kind of the countries and the cultures involved, but also to have their say on those key issues, all whilst developing key skills in critical thinking, creative writing, learning to be a bit more empathetic and consider somebody else's viewpoints. Um, and for the society, that's really important. Working with young people is mainstreamed across all of our activities. And we really see this program as an introduction, a way for young people to get involved with the RCS, with the and Commonwealth as a larger network, but also to have their achievement recognized and celebrated um, and they can kind of enter in any form of creative writing. So it is a real opportunity to, to have some fun with it whilst also kind of becoming part of something a bit bigger than yourself and, and having your say on a global scale. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Coral. Uh, do you have a number to show, I mean, approximately how many participants um, they participate in all these years? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, since it's, um, it's been such a long time, it's kind of difficult for us to quantify those numbers. But what we do have is have the um, evidence of, of entries from years ago. So the RCS has archives, which we keep at Cambridge University Library. Um, and they've got wonderful pieces from the 1920s, from kind of the 30s and 40s and 50s, which are a real insight to young people's priorities at those times and their attitudes and their ideas. Um, since 2010, everything's been a little bit more digital, a little bit easier for us to record. Um, and we've had about 87,000 entries since 2010. So there's a real huge group of young people. And what's quite nice is to see that spread across the Commonwealth. So I think we have about 49 Commonwealth countries participate each year. Um, still, still trying to get those last five in. Um, but yeah, to see those young people from across the Commonwealth and um, going through a bit of a journey with the programme and with the Commonwealth. So we might have children who enter into our junior category, who then learn and grow, enter into the senior category, who come back and remain involved and, and promote the competition in their own communities, but also become judges and really just stay involved because they can really see the value in, such, in the, in the programme. Thank you very much, Coral. Now, my, my second question goes to Dr. Solomon. Um, so, Dr. Solomon, how the RCS uh, Cyprus branch is involved in this competition? Well, uh, first of all, right from the start with the establishment of the RCS Cyprus branch, uh, this uh, was considered one of the important aspects of uh, the work that uh, the uh, society will be carrying out. Uh, as you know, we have, been, we have discussed this a number of times. This was of particular interest uh, to me as someone involved in education over a, quite a, a number of years. And um, what we are trying now to do is um, create awareness. It is a fact that um, uh, in the early 60s, in Cyprus, more was known about the Commonwealth. Then, as the European Union idea and so on began to come more to the foreground, it, uh, it receded. So, not much was known about uh, the um, uh, competition, about the Commonwealth, about RCS for that matter. Uh, now, the, we are trying to provide this information to young uh, people uh, in, um, in schools, mostly in secondary schools. I have, uh, since I took on this task as a member of the board of RCS Cyprus, I have approached uh, some of these um, uh, schools that primarily teach in English because for obvious reasons, they are um, sort of private schools. Uh, it's really three things in one, trying, uh, what we're trying to do. One, you need to explain what the Commonwealth is. These younger people, uh, the last few years, have not heard much about it. The second is to say something about RCS, what, what is it, what are its aims, uh, the mission, and so on. And then the essay competition. Um, I must say that uh, there was um, interest uh, right from the beginning amongst the secondary school uh, uh, pupils that fall into both uh, categories, uh, the junior and the senior category. There would have been more of these, but unfortunately, the events with the COVID and so on mm -hmm. brought us to a standstill. Uh, still, I believe there will be participation from Cyprus in the competition. And uh, when we have, hopefully things will be better next year and we will have more time, uh, there will be uh, a sort of organized attempt to create awareness and interest amongst the young people into what I described earlier. 
uh, essay competition uh, primarily. Okay, that's for the time being. Thank you, Dr. Salamo. I think it's good also to mention uh, that Cyprus from its establishment, uh, it attempts to be, the, to, to be established itself as information hub for all the details in regard to the, uh, uh, to the Queen's World competition in Cyprus. And uh, we can announce that, that from September, the Asia Cyprus will organize various events um, for the promotion of this particular competition uh, in various schools um, in Cyprus, uh, both um, private and, and public ones. Yes. The, pu the public ones, as you know, we had um, turned to the ministry because with the public school, you have to go through the ministry. We had positive response, but then, unfortunately, the whole system uh, shut down. And then um, with all the problems, I think it's a bit uh, late in the, you know, and it's close to the deadline. And with all the problems these young children were facing and with exams and an unfamiliar thing, working remotely uh, online. Uh, but I am hopeful from the interest shown in the early stages, uh, going back to sort of February, so to speak, uh, that um, this will pick up and we will have good results. That is in terms of participation and so on. Thank you, Dr. Salomon. Um, so now let's move to, uh, to another issue, and particularly to, to this year, topics, climate action and the Commonwealth. So, Coral, how relevant do you believe is, is the topic with the current environment as the world? Yeah, I think it's, it's a really interesting topic this year. I mean, um, obviously we always try and keep them relevant and current to things that young people are considering. Um, and there has been undeniable motivation around young people to call for action on climate issues and to kind of become more and more engaged with that and um, as Dr Solmu really rightly said this year's competition has been somewhat interrupted uh, by the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and so I think it's going to be quite interesting for children who do want to enter to think about these things within that context as well I think we're going to see some really interesting entries come in and um, the uh, the topics are split into junior and to senior to kind of give a bit of a range um, but I think the nice thing about them is that they're quite varied within themselves so if you look at the kind of junior category you have uh, topic four my planet my place um, which is is nice and broad it gives young people the opportunity to take that in any kind of direction that they feel important to them but also to kind of really play with the form again so it could be a poem it could be a story and um, but then you also have kind of more traditional essay competition questions, sort of a blue Commonwealth. It's not too late to save our oceans, true or false. So we've really tried to keep in the kind of variety of methods, but to pull in the, the kind of undeniable um, yeah, issues and that still need to be on the radar, even whilst everybody is dealing with a lot more um, kind of pandemic related impact than anyone could have anticipated. Okay. Thank you very much, Coral. Dr. Solomon, do you have any about uh, this uh, this year topic do you believe that the pandemic um, may inspire the uh, the participants to link the, the environmental issues with the pandemic it's possible uh, it's difficult to see to tell now how these young people will uh, respond because it's a very unreal situation they are facing um, so we have to wait and see exactly how they connect uh, various things. They lost um, this immediate contact with the, you know, the school environment, with their teachers and so on. So um, it's not easy really uh, to say um, what direction their work uh, will um, uh, take, but uh, I think some of them um, will relate it. Uh, they, they have been affected and uh, they will relate it, yes. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you very much. Now, a core of the competition um, is separated in, in three basic categories of participants. Um, which of these categories and what is expected from each category? And if you also refer to the prizes for, for the winners, I think this is, uh, this is a good incentive for, for people to participate uh, in the competition. <laughs> yeah, I think you're probably right. Um, so we split the, cat the categories as per age. Uh, the competition is quite broad. The kind of only um, conditions for eligibility are that you're aged 18 and under, and that you are a Commonwealth citizen or resident. Um, and apart from that, it's quite broad. So our senior category is for children who are aged 14 to 18. Now, there's sometimes a little bit of... Um, uh, confusion around this but the deadline for entries is the 30th of June so what matters is your age on that day if you are 14 on the 30th of June you're in the senior category if you are 13 on the, th on the 30th of June you're in the junior category uh, so from each of these two categories we we have about 100 judges who are all across the Commonwealth and they read every single piece um, and judge it. So they look for things like uh, originality of idea, imagination, creativity, um, things like spelling and grammar are important, but they're not as important as some of the other more um, creative elements. So once these judges have gone through the procedure, they all choose uh, either, a, they choose gold, silver and bronze entries everybody gets a, a certificate, which I think is really nice. So everyone mm -hmm. gets a, a certificate of participation, but some get gold, silver and bronze if they're particularly great writing. Then each judge selects a, their favorite piece in their um, batch. So what we call the gold finalists award. And those go to a final panel of kind of industry experts based in London or that we can get to London. Um, and these can be publishers and authors and directors. It's a real range of, of expertise and experience. Um, and those people will select one winner and one runner up from all of the entries. So you end up with a pool of four winners who, and their prize is to come to London and take part in a week of what we call winner's week. So. It's a kind of program of educational and cultural events to showcase uh, the heritage of London, but also the doors that creative writing can open. So we might take the winners to see a play or to visit um, a publishing house or a newspaper and get a sense of those kind of things and, and careers that they can go on to do if this is something they're interested in. Um, and of course, the highlight of uh, Winners Week is usually the award ceremony. Um, now, in the last kind of couple of years, this has been held at Buckingham Palace and very kindly attended by the Society's Vice Patron, Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cornwall, um, where winners have received their certificates from her. And it's a fantastic day. Um, we try and again, get lots of creative industries, get lots of exciting young people there um, and just have a, a really fantastic celebration. Okay, thank you very much, Coral. Uh, Dr. Solomon, uh, beyond the, um, let's say, the conventional prizes, um, what are the benefits, uh, A, for the participants, and B, for the schools? Okay. Well, certainly, uh, I think trying to promote in these schools uh, generally the use of language, that in itself is a, is a benefit. These young people will be trying to write uh, in, in English, which is, in uh, the vast majority of cases, their second language. So we could say that one benefit is cultivating language. Uh, the other, uh, as um, Cora has just described, there is incentive, certainly, uh, joining a competition and uh, it's good that they get used to this idea of uh, uh, competing in the right sense. Mm -hmm. of the world. Uh, and um, also very, very important is the um, uh, creativity. It cultivates creativity. It makes them think, think in a different way, in a more creative way and what I have, no, um, I have noticed, um, I managed to have some contact with one of the schools, 
how it created also a, a bond between um, the students who showed interest and prepared uh, an essay. And uh, in this case, uh, two of the teachers of the school that had undertaken this um, uh, role of uh, uh, coordinating the activity within the school. I am really very, very pleased to say that uh, both teachers uh, were ex-students of mine. <laughs> and uh, they, they have shown a keen interest. It created a bond because they did inform me that uh, uh, being at home and so on, uh, students were exchanging you know, emails and so on, saying how they progressed and all that. So in, in this sense, uh, I would say there are multiple benefits. Uh, um, the how they cultivate creativity uh, because I'm sure even from what Coral has mentioned and it's also evident in the instructions that the emphasis is on being creative and this is very important for young people uh, it will uh, create also as I said uh, the opportunity to cultivate the language and uh, in the background, there is the incentive. Some of them, even the idea of getting a certificate of participation and so on, has its, um, its significance. And I would also add, last but not least, the interesting topics that mm -hmm. relate to present realities. Uh, it's not, they are not asked to sort of deal and handle something which is so much out of reality, out of the, so, and I'm sure this will continue. It's a line, a policy line that um, those, the organizers of the competition uh, follow. And uh, it's, uh, it's interesting because parallel to their creativity, it encourages them to find out information because, before they start writing. And, and this is also a benefit. Yeah, definitely. And I think one of the um, topics this year for the senior category is imagine you were president of one of the Commonwealth's 31 small states. So you might have young people in Cyprus who think, OK, well, let me learn about these small states. Let me learn about a Pacific island for the first time and then write from that perspective. And so, yeah, that really shows the kind of the learning and the creativity coming together. Yeah, even I, uh, there was a case where two or three of them were trying to uh, sort of research what is the role of a president? <laughs> <laughs> Which is in itself Fantastic. Because uh, they might not have thought of, about it much before. They know he's somewhere there, in mm -hmm. our case, okay, he heads the government. But to try and write as if you were a president, they mm -hmm. found that they needed to learn more of what being a president uh, involves. And this was in itself an interesting uh, sort of experiment, if I may say so. Definitely. I totally agree with, uh, uh, with your comments. And we can add that um, the, the competition is also another opportunity for, for youth to uh, to the Commonwealth and understand what is the Commonwealth what is the role of common work in the, in the work? Mm. Um, also, dear Dr. Solomon, given your academic capacity and all of your this year experience in various educational competitions, could you give some advice, some tips for the participants? Um, yes, I would say uh, what we have already mentioned. You, you take the topic, some research will be needed so you get some of your information right, okay? But I, what I, having seen the topics and the way they were presented, I think uh, the next most important uh, step would be how you create from that. It's creativity, really, because you don't need an essay that reads like Wikipedia. You know, it's just a fact. I don't think 
the judges uh, in, you know, would be looking for this sort of thing because that's easy. You can get it from any, any source. So, yes, you read at the beginning. You have to be familiar with the topic. Um, and then you have to use uh, imagination, use creativity, and uh, write something that is yours. It comes from you as a candidate, as someone interested, and is fresh. And mm -hmm. uh, in that sense, it will be original. And yeah. way that I think that originality is the most important thing uh, yeah. in that competition. Originality is linked with creativity because what you think to be creative is like, it doesn't matter. It may, not, it may be very good, it may be average, but it will be original. It, it's your work. If you go for the sort of standard uh, thing, like you find some information, you copy bits and pieces and you paraphrase some others, and you stick them together, I don't think this is what it's all, um, all about. Mm. And uh, creative writing is very important in our lives, in many, many different ways. It's something that will, at once developed, you carry on after school, after university. It becomes part of your life, being creative. We exactly. Need to, yeah. This is something that separates you from the others, I think, the creativity. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Coral, you... Sorry. Yes, please, Dr. Salomon. It's, uh, it's a characteristic, it's something that you, you develop, you know? It's a way of thinking, a way of approaching something, and uh, it, can, it can be uh, developed. Mm -hmm. Coral, uh, any other comments on, on that? Any apps for uh, for the participants? Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Um, the judges are all trained. They are all looking for something imaginative and original. Um, if if the children were looking for inspiration, they can read um, the previous year's winning pieces on the RCS website to see what kind of things have won before. Um, and yeah, just really engage with the topics. I think try and. Try and not think of it as a chore. Try and not think of it as a task that you have to do. Just have some fun with it and, and see what you write. And we're, we're just excited to hear from all young people, um, as many kind of who would like to get involved, as many aspiring young writers as there are. So, yeah, I'm, one of my favourite things is always reading the entries every year. So I'm looking forward to seeing them. OK, thank you very much. So uh, which future initiatives can be to engage more people in this will establish and prestigious competition. Coral, you can begin. I think um, what I always find quite interesting is that when people know about the competition, they're very excited, they're very interested, and they want to get involved. So for me, any future initiatives that were taken would be around getting the information out there. Um, you kind of mentioned that you have some teacher ambassadors, which is fantastic. And um, going into the schools, which I think is great, obviously slightly more difficult at the moment, but for the future, I think, yeah, just kind of distributing information early enough, but competition is open from kind of around October, November until May, June time. So it's a long time to be continually engaging people. Um, I think anything that can be done to celebrate the previous winners and show children and young people what can happen if they enter um, and just make sure that all the information is out there and, and really readily and easily accessible. Yeah, um, the main points have been raised by Coral. I, I am um, hopeful and optimistic that, uh, you see for us talking about Cyprus now, although the competition itself is old, not much was known, at least we didn't know much. Uh, so this was a beginning and unfortunately came in a year that was difficult. But yes, uh, as uh, Coral mentioned, going into schools, talking about the Commonwealth, about Commonwealth countries, about RCS, about the competition, a bit of this was done in the early 
part of the year, uh, and there would have been more of it, and there would have been uh, greater participation. Um, we didn't manage to reach many schools. As I said, the, public, the state schools would have been provided quite a lot or an important opening, but um, we couldn't uh, proceed. So uh, considering that we will be going back to normality, uh, whatever that might mean in the future, <laughs> I am uh, optimistic that uh, there will be uh, interest and uh, this will be both for the benefit of the students and you asked earlier marinos it's also for the benefit of the schools it creates i mentioned this sort of earlier it creates a kind of bond of this group of students when they uh, indicate interest they get together they have a chance to meet with their teachers in the particular school. This was done both in class, but also outside, you know, and this brought them closer uh, in discussing ideas and so on. Therefore, there, I think there are a lot of benefits and there is a um, future for the growth of this uh, uh, competition. So right. we hope to see these changes <laughs> next year. Uh, it's important that they are given enough time because these other things uh, have the time to develop. Because, you know, if it was, we announce it now and in three weeks you have to submit, it would, it's different. The idea that uh, there is enough time, uh, it gives the chance to the students to reflect to find some information, then they have time to think, write, change, modify, whatever. And I think this is a useful process in itself, irrespective of whatever result. I think we Thank you. cover this aspect as well. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Solomon. And Coral, how the people can find more information about the competition? information is available on the RCS website. So www.thercs.org slash competition has all of the um, terms and conditions. It has the topics. It has a page for resources. So we've created uh, lesson plans and posters and presentations, things that teachers can use and also parents can use um, to show their children all the information they need to know. Um, you can follow the RCS on social media. So we are on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. And um, to enter your piece, it's done online on our online platform, which is compatible with phones and tablets. So if you don't have access to a computer, that's, that's totally fine. Um, you can, if you have access to a phone, you can use that. And in fact, on our Instagram and on our Facebook, there's a handy video which shows you exactly every step you need to take to enter using your phone. So yeah, the information is definitely out there. Um, and if you have any other questions, there's an email address, it's uh, competitions at the rcs.org where you can contact us and one of the team will get back to you. That's very good, that's very good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Dear both, uh, our episode is moving to... Uh, to so, um, the stage is yours for your final remarks. Dr. Solomon, would you like to begin? Uh, first of all, it was a uh, very nice meeting, Coral, and we now have uh, uh, someone uh, in person to contact back in, in London. Uh, we heard some interesting things as well, and I'm sure those who will watch uh, eventually the podcast will benefit. We have covered uh, uh, the most uh, important aspects of what this competition uh, involves and uh, I look forward to working uh, in promoting this uh, uh, competition because uh, other than um, you know winning a prize whatever uh, I consider it a sort of very important educational process. It helps uh, uh, students, irrespective of whether they get a prize or uh, or not. 
so I'm, as I said, I'm optimistic that uh, this um, will uh, will uh, spread. And we see great, um, greater numbers participating. Coral, your message to the, uh, to the participants? My message to the participants, um, get writing, enter the competition. Uh, everybody is waiting and excited to read your pieces. Um, and yeah, this has been a, a really fun experience. And thank you, Marinos, for organizing. I think it's a really good idea and a clever way to get the information out there, as you said, Dr. Solomon, and to show young people that it is definitely possible and we definitely want to hear from them. Um, and yeah, to kind of put a face to a name is always nice. So no, it's been really good and really, really lovely to meet you both and to speak a little bit and learn a bit more about what you guys do. Yes, I would like to thank Marinos as well. It was his initiative in organizing this and uh, therefore we we could think in the future of uh, covering different um, aspects in different ways mm. uh, once we get more information from uh, the schools teachers mm. students uh, perhaps problems they face or queries and so on we can build up some something again uh, through which we can address uh, mm. these issues that might, uh, might arise. This was a very good beginning, Marinos, and we thank you for that. Definitely. Al always at your disposal. Dear <laughs> both, dear Dr. Solomu, dear Coral, let me thank you again for this really interesting discussion. I'm sure that um, our audience um, will, will know much more now about the uh, Queensworth um, essay competition. So, dear friends, thank you for watching this episode and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you to the next episode.